Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marco of Living Streams, uh, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams, we meet behind the trade fair, behind Zenith College, um, at the Life Cathedral in the Zoe Chapel, one of the chapels of the cathedral. And we invite you to uh, worship with us on Sundays for two services, 7 to 9 and 10 o'clock to 12. That's your choice in the morning. And then on Wednesdays in the evening, we meet uh, at 6 30 to 8 o'clock in the evenings at the same place. Now this, this morning, I, I'm, I'm interested in Luke chapter 9. And uh, uh, the last time we spoke about Luke chapter 9, but I'm still interested in Luke chapter 9. And this time, just verse 32. Just verse 32. Now, guess what? If you remember, I mean, in Luke chapter 9, 28 to 31, Jesus had gone to the Mount of Transfiguration and he took the three musketeers, or the, I like to also call them the three Apaches, you know, the uh, ADCs, the three men, you know, and he took them, that was Peter, James, and John. And he had a very powerful interaction with, with, with the divine, with God. And the Bible says as he was praying, the fashion of his countenance changed and his raiment also changed. Now, then Elijah came and Moses, Elijah and Moses came and then they ministered to him concerning his disease. Now the Mount of Transfiguration had, I mean the appearance of Elijah and uh, Moses was very exciting, very, very exciting for the disciples. I mean, boy, I wish I was there. Boy, I mean, like I would, I would run to the three of them and say, Charlie, please lay hands on me. You know, if you like, even lay legs on me. I'm okay with it. Now, uh, but the Bible said something that was very intriguing. Peter, you know, Peter, 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 my main man, you know, Peter, my main man. <laughs> Peter is a very interesting character. You know, he, he's the first person to say, Lord, if it is you, let me come to you. You know, you're walking on the water. Well, if it is you and you are not a ghost, I also want to walk on the water. Then he takes two steps. Then he begins to sing. Then he begins to say, I have mercy you. <laughs> Peter, I mean, the big mouth <laughs> person, he's too quick with the mouth, you know. And sometimes maybe he needs to think through before he speaks. But... Peter opens his mouth and makes a statement, and that statement is one of the most powerful statements to me. He said, Lord, it is good that you are here. I mean, if he's a man saying it, he said, hey, Charlie Jesus, man, it's good that we are here, you know. <laughs> he said, but then he made another statement. He said, let us build a tabernacle, or let us build a temple, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. That means let us build something here. Let us build something over this over well, this particular experience, now the whole of Jerusalem and the whole of Israel is now that that is going to be uh, uh, what do we call it uh, our pilgrimage spot, the, the end point of uh, of pilgrimage. And then I mean, of course, Judas will say, "Now nah, I, I will collect the money and and steal some," you know. But Judas wasn't there. But Peter might say, "Okay, I, I'll be the gate man and make sure." But Judas will bow and say, "I will collect the money." Now this is what Peter said: it is, "Lord, it is good we are here." That means we are here for a reason. We are here for a purpose. Now we understand the purpose. Now we see clearly what God wanted to do. Now we see clearly what God wanted to show us. And we have a responsibility towards that, uh, that purpose. And that responsibility is to build you a, 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 a tent or build you a tabernacle or build you a temple. Build Moses one and build Elijah one. The three most famous people, the three most powerful people in the Bible Let's build temples for them. And, and Jesus ignored it and rather said, no, let's go down. Hmm. Now here's the principle. Now Peter said, we don't, we don't need to go any further. That's it. That's it. What Peter was saying that Jesus didn't need to come and die for you and for me. Uh, Jesus, let's know, let me say it like that. Look how uh, fishermen in, in, in a crowd, uh, you know, would say, uh, Jesus, they said, don't, uh, you don't need to die. Let's just build something. As for those people, excuse me, I mean, the grandma was saying, let me a You get it? This will, no, don't bother me. Don't bother about the uh, children of rats or something like that. You know, let's go build. Let's go, let's do something. Let's stay here. 
Peter was saying, let's stay here. Jesus was saying, let's march to my death. Sometimes, what we do is that we can tabernacle over an experience or we can build a tent over an experience in such a way that we forget that there's a tomorrow ahead of us. Sometimes the purpose of that experience, you know, is, 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 is thrown away, you get it, because of the, uh, the pleasure of that experience. The purpose for that experience is for you to go forward equipped Jesus must go forward and die, equipped with the knowledge that his father will, may not hear his prayer every time, and then he may not find his father in the drama or in the dramatic. This is what is, he needs to go, and he needs to go to the cross and die for it. So what Peter was saying, let's build temples, but those temples were going to be destructive for the destiny of Jesus. Especially for us. Maybe there's an experience and then we build a tent around that experience and never want to move beyond that experience. Maybe something happened in the past. It could be a joyous moment or it could be a painful moment. It could be a, 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 a triumphant moment or it could be a traumatic moment. And what we do is that if you're not very careful, we'll build a tabernacle over it. We'll build a tent there, park our cars there and never move forward into the future. And never move forward into what God wants us to do. So what, G, what P, uh, P, Peter was suggesting, a temple, it looks good on the outside, but it's destructive to the purposes of God for Jesus. Don't build on just your past experience. Don't build on just it, because there is more that God wants to do. The Bible says, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart conceived the things that God has laid in store. So what you see today it's not the end. There's something bigger and better. Now, uh, Peter gets a great drought of fish. And whilst he's celebrating, Jesus comes and says, I'm going to give you bigger fish than what you have now. What you have now, you would eat and go to the bathroom with it. But I'm giving you an, something that will give you an investment into eternity. I will make you fishes of men. So sometimes if you're not very careful, we are trapped by our experiences of today and we never want to move into tomorrow. Our pain, our pleasure. And we are trapped into it. But sometimes it's time for us to move on to the next level. You know what? Don't build temples over yesterday. There's something that God wants to do. For the temples that you build can sometimes be destructive to your purpose. See you later.